Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and I've built a number of different gaming PCs over the last few years in various different cases, formats, and layouts, and during that period I've learned a few different things about things that I like to use that make the build process easier, and so I thought it might be worth sharing those so that you can see what they are and maybe they'll be helpful in your build. Now I'm not talking about components, because obviously those change over time, but specific accessories. Things that you can use in your builds will hopefully be useful, maybe make your life easier. And you can see some of them here. So I'll talk about each individual one and then I'll leave links in the description so you can find out more. The first of these is Noctua's wipes. So there are alternatives to this, but these are Noctua's cleaning wipes. Essentially they're alcohol infused wipes that can be used to wipe off thermal paste. Now I've bought multiple boxes of these over the last few years and you can buy them in big packs with lots of them or individually or just a triple pack with three in there and maybe some thermal paste. So there's a lot of different options there, but you can see essentially these are pre-packaged wipes with just the right amount of alcohol in them to be able to use to wipe off thermal paste and clean other parts in your system. I found them really useful and super handy. Now, obviously I take apart a lot of PCs and I build with different parts. I use components, reuse components, and sometimes you might want to do the same. And it could be something as simple as wanting to change the thermal paste in your system because you've noticed the CPUs running a little bit hot. That can be well worth doing because you might want to just clean that thermal paste off, replace it, rejuvenate it, and that could well improve the system. For getting the thermal paste off, these wipes are fantastic. They're really easy, just clean that off. Unless you've got something a little bit tricky like this Ryzen CPU with the notched edges on it, it's pretty easy to just basically just wipe that clean. You can clean up both the CPU and the, your CPU cooler. So the pump block here, for example, you'll see just how easy that cuts through there. And it will work even if the thermal paste has been on there a while. Now you might wanna do this so you can upgrade the thermal paste, more on that in a second, but just rejuvenating it can really help. Now these wipes are also useful in other ways. I use them for a variety of things. Another thing I use them for is just cleaning fans. So although you can, yes, use compressed air to clean up your case if necessary, you'll often find that you'll still have a layer or a caking of dirt and dust on the fans and getting it off can be a pain. What I found is these wipes have just the right amount of moisture or it's not too much that's gonna cause problems, but it will help to just extract that dirt and clean the fans up and make them look nice. Now, obviously there are alternatives. You could just get an alcohol solution and use something else for this, but this is my favorite. It's not the be all and end all, but I found it fantastic and really handy. Now onto thermal paste. I think Thermal Grizzly has some of the best thermal paste around. This is Cryonaut. It's been tested by a lot of other people, including Gamers Nexus, who think really highly of it. I wasn't paid by anybody featured in this video, by the way. These are just the things that I use. So Thermal Grizzly's Cryonaut is a really good tube of thermal paste. It comes with a little attachment on the end that essentially acts as like a spatula. So you can put your thermal paste on there and then spread it around, ensuring good coverage across the IHS. Now I'll probably get people arguing that I'm using too much thermal paste here or that I'm doing it wrong. I've done some tests. I've shown that actually spreading it like this is perfectly fine and often gives better coverage and cooling. And Cryonaut is fantastic. Now Thermal Grizzly also does a number of other thermal pastes, including a liquid metal one, which is really highly thought of for overclocking. I haven't personally used that, but I do know it is very good. And it is also very expensive, so that might be off-putting. Whereas this one is reasonably affordable and the tube's got loads of thermal paste in there, enough for multiple applications. Now, another thing that I use all the time, and this is really old, so it's pretty tatty, but this is an electrostatic discharge mat. So it basically gets rid of any static buildup in your body. The idea is you plug it into the mains and then you have a connector on the mat and what it ensures is that the electrostatic charge in your body basically goes through the mat rather than through the components, doesn't do any damage. Now the plug here is a British plug. So you'll see that it has a metal pin on it that goes into the ground point on our plugs, which are the best in the world. And there's a Tom Scott video on why that I'll link to in the description. But basically this replaces having a band, a wristband that then clips onto an exposed pipe in your house. And it just ensures the grounding and that there's no static buildup that could cause damage to your components. The other way I make sure my components are safe is with these various different cutting mats. So you can see I've got loads of these different colors. You might have noticed if you watch my videos, you'll see a lot of different colors appearing in the background. These cutting mats I use while I'm building the various different components on my desk. This saves my desk from getting scratched. They aren't electrostatic discharge mats, so they won't necessarily protect from that. Now, that is not the point I'm making. They are more just hard wearing mats 
self-healing and also just can stand up to use and abuse. More importantly, it ensures I don't damage the desk underneath because my desk is really expensive and a good quality material. So when I'm building stuff like this with lots of metal parts on it, it could potentially damage the desk and I don't want to do that. So I just like these mats for building on. And with all the sort of design of them, you can organize things on there nicely. You'll see that I have the A1 version of this. So nice large mats in various different colors. They're also double sided and different colors on each side. So you've got some nice variety there, but that's not going to be important for the build process. But you can see that you can put a whole case on there. And this is the Lian Lee Dynamic Evo XL. So a nice large case fits easily. Now, another thing that I found recently is a very simple thing, which is a magnetic little mat. This has a very small amount of magnetic charge on it. Basically, it holds the screw. So when you're unbuilding or building a PC, you'll find there's loads of little screws that you need, radio screws, fan screws, whatever else. I often found that they would just roll off the desk and fall on the floor when I wasn't paying attention, or I'd just lose them. Putting them on this mat ensures that they all stay in one place and they're easy to access and to find without any hassle. The other thing that I've had for a long time is this iFixit screwdriver kit, which is not just screwdrivers, but a mass of other tools as well. Now inside the kit, you'll see there are loads of different bits in here for obviously using in various different ways. I actually only probably use about four of them. So most of them might be unnecessary, but obviously it's handy to have this sort of kit knocking around anyway for beyond building PCs. If you want to do other things, it can be really handy. Now you will see that there are also other tools included in here. So this kit not only has the screwdriver set, but it also has a number of other plastic tools and metal tools. Some of them are even missing from my kit because I've taken them out and then I forgot to put them back. Obviously don't do that. Try and keep it as a self-contained unit because it will be more effective that way. And it's really handy to have everything here and in grabbing distance when you need it. So simple tools for doing various other things. So one of the other things I used this for, for example, was to upgrade my Steam Deck because it has these various plastic tools that are designed to allow you to take things apart carefully without damaging the screen or other important components inside rather than jamming a screwdriver in there and hoping for the best, for example. So again, really helpful just to have this hanging about and it isn't super expensive. So it is worth just investing in and using the screwdriver itself also has a little spinny top so you can see the undoing things with it with ease. Now, the other thing is fairly basic. You'll get this with most power supply units and cases and that's plastic cable ties. Now, a lot of people will tell you to use these to tie down your cables in your case. I generally don't like them for the most part. And that's because of the way I operate. So when I'm building a PC, I'm usually building it and then I'm taking it apart at some point to build in another one, reuse the components and other things. So using plastic cable ties can be a problem because it's obviously tying things down and then you have to remove them again. But it obviously also helps with neatening things up. It is worth doing because you are tidying up the case making for more room, making for better airflow, potentially making things neater and easier to see. You can see I did it with the Corsair IQ link system in the 5000D here, and it made a big difference, it made everything look really nice. But I then had to take that all apart again. So the other thing I would recommend is instead using Velcro ties. I bought a pack of loads of these ties and it's actually getting a little empty now, but I use these for a variety of things, cable tidying on my desk, but also in PC builds. Using Velcro ties is beneficial because you can basically temporarily tie things up. So Corsair has it in their 5000D cases where you already get some included. But what you can do is basically put your cables into those Velcro ties to secure them in place and neaten things up. This is worth doing because you can do it before you get to the final stages of actually turning your machine on and making sure everything's working. So you can check that it all works before you've cable tied so you don't have to then take everything apart to find what the problem is. If you do need to cable tie, I'd recommend some very small scissors to cut through those because getting them out again is a pain. I alternatively use this Gerber knife, which is a power frame knife, which I've had for ages. I use it for my unboxings and for other things is really handy. Now components, I said there wasn't going to be any of, but there is one that I'd recommend and it's the NZXT USB hub. So this is an internal hub for your PC. So if you found you've got two USB ports on your motherboard or maybe one, but you have to plug in multiple things like fan controllers, all in one coolers and other things, RGB connectors, all sorts of things like that, you might quickly run out of USB ports. This basically allows you to plug in four USB connections and then plug it into a single port on your motherboard. So theoretically you could have five USB connections now 
and with a simple purchase. This is really affordable and easy to set up. It does have the requirement for SATA power, so you will need to plug it into your power supply unit as well. But that ensures you're not overloading one of the ports because it's powered in itself. And then you can manage everything you need to from here. This is an essential purchase for most cases, especially if you're throwing loads of RGB and stuff at it. There are alternatives. I previously recommended this little tiny, much more affordable one, which only has two ports on it. This one doesn't require any SATA power because it's just two ports into one single port that connects up to the USB header. But it is simple. It does have a sticky back on it, for example, so you can stick it in the case really easily. The other thing you can do if you're brave is you can just take the cables apart and thread two USBs into one, but I'm not doing that. And if you're like me, you want the easy solution. Another thing that's really important is a USB thumb drive. I have had this small USB thumb drive that you can see here for a long time. And I usually put Windows ISOs on it so that you can build Windows with it. I've done a guide on how to do this from your phone because that makes life a little bit easier if you haven't got two PCs. But just having an extra drive around can be really handy for doing something like installing Windows on a new machine because otherwise you're going to have a problem where you haven't got a disk drive or access to be able to do this and that can be a pain. The other problem you often find is when you actually get Windows installed, you can't get on the internet because you haven't got the drivers on your PC. <laughs> So that's a pain. So a USB drive and then something else like a, another computer, a laptop, or maybe a phone will allow you to download the Wi-Fi drivers and then install them on your PC. So there you go. There's a collection of things I think are really useful and worth having when you're building a PC, especially if you're building loads, but maybe just for upgrading your PC, rejuvenate the thermal paste, clean things up a bit or whatever else you're doing. Hopefully you found these useful. Don't forget the links are down in the description so you can find out more. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.